环球财经环节，纽约财经记者庞哲邀请美国学者对比研究中西不同文化背景之下的商业行为，交给你，庞哲。是的，人人不同国度的多元文化，一般情况下呢，会丰富人类的生活乐趣和经历。但是在工商业国际间的合作方面，则会成为令管理层相当头痛的大问题。今天的经济观察，我们就来讨论一本新书《文化地图》，从老外的眼光来透过文化背景看中国管理层的商业行为。不过，首先我们回顾过去一个星期的欧美股票市场走势的状况。周一美股受并购消息的支持高收，美国股市周二好于预期的消费信心指数支持标普五百冲涨历史新高两千点作收。周三美股基本持平，全天窄幅震荡，交易清淡。乌克兰局势再次紧张，抵消利好的经济增长数据。纽约股市周四收跌，周五经济数据利好，标普再创新高，美股上升作收。欧洲股市周一受央行可能推出振兴计划上涨作收。欧洲股市周二、周三看好俄罗斯和乌克兰首脑会晤以及央。行的货币政策倾向收盘大幅上涨，乌克兰地缘政治紧张，欧股周四收低。星期五经济数据复合市场预期，欧洲股市小幅攀升作收。中国数千年的文化美德，书画、饮食、歌舞、服饰，应该说是备受世界文化人士的爱戴和拥抱。但是自从中国登上了国际商业舞台，中国人的言行举止却使很多想跟中国老板们密切合作的老外们倍感困惑。例如是时间观念、契约精神等等方面，由于不同的文化理念，就是商业往来产生了巨大的障碍。那么，我们今天为大家介绍一本研究国际不同文化间相互影响的新书《文化地图》，并以作者艾琳·迈尔小姐呢，就这本书当中有关中国文化背景下的中国老板的商业行为方面的一些具体的问题进行沟通。So many Chinese companies、mm -hmm. are moving into new markets, and cultural differences are impacting their ability to be successful.、Mm -hmm. So in my book, I teach managers how to decode the cultural differences that may be impacting their work, and then I provide strategies for how they can improve their success when、mm -hmm. working internationally. Did you go to different countries to try to、mm -hmm. understand their cultures, and then summarize what you have learned? And how did you do this? The research comes from all over. We're doing.、Um, We're doing statistics where we're using professors in different countries who are interviewing people in those countries. We're also doing surveys. But beyond that, I work on a daily basis with、uh, an ex with executive participants who come from all over the world. So I'm constantly interviewing them、mm -hmm. and learning from them about their experiences. Maybe I'll just give you some、uh, examples. I think generally, when you're looking at the difference, for example, between Western cultures and China, a few things come up the most frequently.、Mm. One of them is the notion of time, how we how we see、uh, the importance of being reactive and flexible versus scheduled and planning in advance. So when I I work with an Americans who are working with the Chinese, they're surprised at how flexible the Chinese are. I had an American client a while ago who had recently moved to Beijing, and he、mm -hmm. said, "Wow, you know, I first moved here, and I I attended several conferences, and I was just." Taken aback to、mm -hmm. see that the night before the conference, times would be changed, speakers would be changed, and at first I saw that as just disorganization and chaos.、Mm -hmm. But later I came to see that you know, the Chinese, in comparison to us Americans, are just extremely flexible. And if you're working in China, you need to learn to be flexible also.、Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, for Chinese, I think there's a culture misunderstanding of the way of American people doing things too. I heard、uh, one example. Example is,、uh, they don't understand retainer fees. They、mm -hmm. just think I pay, they paid you.、Mm -hmm. You should do specific job for them. If you don't do specific job, but you collect fees on monthly basis, they just think they're being cheated. They touch subjects like that, and、mm -hmm. also subjects like what does a contract mean、mm -hmm. in different countries. So there's also a lot of confusion with that between, for example, Northern European or and American cultures in comparison to China,、mm -hmm. whereas the written contract means you know, the final end of the deal 
in an American or Northern European country. And often in China, the contract is more flexible after it's been signed. And that can cause a lot of confusion on both sides. So I think what's really important is that once people are aware of these differences, and that's what I try to do with my book, to just raise awareness and provide strategies, that these things don't have to be a big deal. Mm. The problem is that when you're not aware, you run into traps, like mm. thinking that you have a commitment on one side, or the other person thinks that you've just started negotiations mm. or started discussions. The more aware we become, the more effective we can be. 以上就是这节的环球财经新闻的收看，现在将现场将会在香港直播室主播。